In this video, we'll go over the last lesson of the unit, which is on Pascal's triangle. So this triangular array of numbers has lots and lots of patterns. Now, unfortunately, we're not going to go over all the patterns, but I'll try to introduce a few just to show you how awesome this triangle is. Um, okay, you know what? I don't want to spoil too much. So let's just first start off by building the rows of the triangle. So uh, they actually want me to build the first eight rows of the triangle. So you know what? I have row zero and I have row one. So how do you build uh, each row of the triangle? So let's start off by saying this is row two. So the edges of the triangle are just one. Okay, so we have one and one. Now what about the, the other numbers inside the triangle? Now let me start off by saying there's not going to be one. So to find any number in the triangle, you look above left and above right. So right here in this case is one and one, and you find the sum of the numbers above left and above right. So one plus one is two. All right, and uh, so let's see, we have row two has three terms. Row one has two terms and row zero has one term. So what do you think? How many terms do you think row three is gonna have? Four. So each uh, uh, row has n plus one terms, where n is the row number. So you know what? Let's find the terms in row three. So once again, the edges of the row, uh, those terms are going to be one, but the numbers in the middle will not be. So uh, find the sum of the terms above left and above right. So one plus two, three. Two plus one, three. Beautiful row four so one one i'm going to expect five terms here so this one is going to be four but one plus three is four six four one those are the five terms of the fourth row row five you know i'm just going to row six row seven and row eight one 5, 10, 10, 5, 1, 1, 6, 15, 20, 15, 6, 1, 1, 7, 21, 35, 35, 21, 7, 1, and lastly we have 1, 8, 28, 56, 70, 56, 28, 8, one. Ooh. All right, let's slide that up. So we have eight rows, and of course you can keep going. Uh, so let's start off by uh, talking about a few about a few of the special properties of the Pascal's triangle. So the first diagonal here, nothing special. There's one, 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 one. But the second diagonal of the Pascal's triangle, these are the counting numbers. What about the third row? The third row of the Pascal triangles, the, these are called triangular numbers. So like six is a triangular number because I can build a triangle with the number six. So if I have six items, I can build a triangle. But if I have 10 items, I can build a triangle. Okay, so we can keep going on and on and on, but the third diagonal, these numbers are called triangular numbers. Um, you know what? Let's see. We all know what 11 squared is. 11 squared is 121. And look, what's row, row 2? 1, 2, 1. What about 11 cubed? Whoa! 1, 3, 3, 1. Right? And then, you know what? We'll do one more. 11 to the power of 4. Can row 4 help us with 11 to the power of 4? Absolutely. So that's another <laughs> really cool relationship. Um, but um, as many relationships as there are, we're unfortunately going to focus on the, the big one for grade 11 is using the numbers uh, in each row or in the Pascal's triangle to help us expand a binomial. Okay, now actually I actually have one more thing before I move on. Uh, the way we label each term in the Pascal's triangle, we define the location by talking about the row number and the position within the row, okay? 
So this term, for example, example, this term is in the fourth row. Now, what position is this in within the fourth row? Now, you might be tempted to say it's in the second position, but it's actually in the first position. Now, wait a minute. Why is it in the first position? Because when you uh, label the position, you start with position zero. Just like how you start with row zero, you're going to start with positions, position zero. So position zero, position one, position two, position three, and then position four. So define it by using, or define the, the location within the triangle using the row number and the position number. Let's try one more. Let's try this one, 15 here. So we know this one is in row six. But what about the position within the row? Position zero, two, three, four, five. There we go. I just made a, just to make sure I've one, two, zero, one, two, three, four, yes. And then zero, one, two, three, four, five, six. Perfect. Okay, so, so far so good. I thought I uh, made a small little, uh, the, the positioning of the terms. Anyways, they're beautiful. So uh, what this is saying, this might look a little complicated, but it's just really telling you the, the pattern on how to find the numbers within the triangle. You add the, the numbers above left and above right. So this would be above left and this is above right because you go to the previous row and you either look at the previous position or the same position. All right. So like I said, uh, we are just going to focus, the big focus will be on helping us expand a binomial. So a plus b to the power of n, we're going to use the, the numbers in row n to help us expand a plus b to the power of n. So I try to develop a pattern for you. Okay. So hopefully you can pause the video and try to look for a pattern, but you'll see that like a plus b squared. What are, the, what are the terms in row 2? It's 1, 2, 1. 1, 2, 1. What about the terms in row 3? 1, 3, 3, 1. Hey, wait a minute. The coefficients, when it's expanded, the coefficients match up with the term numbers. And if you look at the exponents, the, the exponent applied to A, or you can say the powers of A are so they start off at, at n and they decrease by 1 to 0. And the powers of b start at 0 and they increase by 1 up to n. Right? So it's a cubed, a squared, a, and a is gone. Okay? And that makes sense that a is no longer there for the final term because it's a plus b all cubed. Your final term really should not have a factor of a. Now, what about b? It's, well, the first one doesn't have b once it makes sense because it's a plus b all cubed. The first term should only have factors of a. So no factors of b, one factor of b, and then two, and then three. So the exponent either goes up by one or down by one. All right, let's, let's, let's just uh, expand. So a plus b to the power four, to expand this, I need to use row four, which is one, four, six, four, one. If you don't have it memorized, then just look up. Okay, a plus b to the power four, I usually don't write the one down, but just to show you that these coefficients match up with the terms of the fourth row, I'll write it down. So a cubed b, and then it's going to be a squared b squared, one, four, six, four. So it's a b cubed and b to the four. Now, uh, most students, unfortunately, don't appreciate what we just did. You save yourself a lot of time, okay? Because that that took that took like I don't know ten seconds. But if you were to expand this without the help of Pascal's triangle, it's going to take a lot longer. Okay, a plus b to the power of five. I need the fifth row. One, five, six, four, one. You don't have to memorize it. Just uh, build it on the test. Okay, let's triple check. 1, 5, 10, 10, 5, 1. 
the powers of a are decreasing by one, so a to the five, a to the four, three, two, one, zero, whereas the powers of b are increasing, so zero, one, two, three, four, five. Perfect, awesome. Okay, so let's do a few more questions on uh, uh, Pascal's triangle on the other sheet. So for 1a, they're saying that uh, they want to express as a single term from Pascal's triangle. So if I have the term in the eighth row and second position and I add it with the term in the eighth row third position, that is basically saying I have the term in the ninth row second position, right? That's the basic idea of Pascal's triangle. That's how you find all the terms. You add that you add diagonal left or above left and above right. Now here you actually have the term below. So you're asking yourself what's above uh, above right, which is 17th row and uh, position three. Because you have above left and what's above right to this term. Well, sorry. This is the above left of this term, so what's above right, which is uh, row 17, third position. You know what, let me try to draw a diagram. So obviously, it'll be 17th row. So that's why this, the answer here must be 17th row third position. All right, so let's use the Pascal's triangle. Ooh, a plus b to the power of seven. You know what, I need the seventh row. All right, so this might seem tedious, but without the Pascal's triangle, this would have taken a lot longer. So a to the seven, seven a b to the six, plus 21 a squared b to the, f oops. I wrote a boo-boo already. Ah, yikes. So a to the six b, a to the power of five b squared plus 28, sorry, 35. 35 a to the power of four b cubed plus next term is 35. All right, let's check. Uh, so uh, the row seven terms are 1, 7, 21, 35, 35, 21, 7, 1. Uh, and the power of A are decreasing, 6, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0. And the powers of B are increasing, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Perfect. Okay. Now this one, wait a minute. It's not just A, it's not just B. It's 2M and minus 3N. No problem. So uh, I need the fifth row here, which is 1, 5, 10, 10, 5, 1. Ooh, so see, it's 2m to the power of 5. 1, 5, so it's then 2m to the power of 4 minus 3m to the power of 1. Two m all cubed minus three n squared. And then lastly, it's minus three n to the power of five. Okay, awesome. If you look at the exponents, they always add up to five, right? Like you can write one here. Right, five, four plus one, three plus two, two plus three, one plus four, five. They're always equal to n. All right, so this is 32 to the power of m. Oh, sorry, 32 m to the power of five, sorry. All right, here, so fo please follow bed math. So it's negative, sorry, two to the four times negative three times five. So that's 16 times 15. And that's so minus 240 m to the power of 4n. 
And here it's going to be negative 3 squared, which is 9. So 9 times 8 is 72. 72 times 10 is 720. 72, be sorry, it's 8 because it's 2 cubed. So 2 cubed, negative 3, all squared. So that's 8 and 9 and 10. M cubed, N squared. So here is negative 3 cubed times 2 squared times 10. So negative 3 cubed is negative 27. Uh, this is going to be 4 and then times 10. 1080. And it's negative, right? Because negative 27 times 4 times 10. What do we have here? Negative 3 to the power of 4. That's 81. 81 times 2 times 5. That's 810. And here, it's negative 3 to the power of 5, so it's negative 243. There you go. I know that seemed long. Well, maybe you didn't, but if you did feel like it was very long, this is a big time saver. Like, yeah, it's definitely a big time saver. If you didn't do this with Pascal's triangle, it would have taken you a lot longer. Okay, which row in Pascal's triangle has a sum of its terms equal to 1,048,576? So this is another relationship of the Pascal's triangle. So the sum of the terms is equal to 2 to the n. So if you look at the, I don't know, let's say the second row, then the sum of the terms is 4, and it does make sense because if, what are the terms in the second row? Row 2, 1, 2, 1. 1 plus 2 plus 1 is 4. What about row 3? 1 plus 3 plus 3 plus 1 is 8, and that's 2 cubed. What about row 4? Row 4 is 2 to the power of 4. Uh, row 5, the sum is 2 to the power of 5. So they actually gave me the sum. So in this case, it's 1,048,576. So you could use logarithms. or use a common base, whatever you want. Twenty. Therefore, there, uh, it's row twenty. Row twenty has a sum of one million forty-eight thousand five hundred seventy-six. All right, so to end it off, we'll do something fun. Uh, let's say you are asked to find, um, you're trying to expand, okay? X minus, y, X minus 2y raised to the power 15. Now, that's crazy because you have to find the terms in row 15. Now, I really don't want to build the, the terms in row 15 or up, like it's just, it's a lot of work. So there's actually a secret to find the terms without actually, you know, building this, like, the second, third, fourth, 15, all up to the 15th row. You can actually find the terms of the 15th row directly. So you're going to learn this in data management, um, but I'll, I'll spoil a bit of it. I'll spoil a bit of the secret. So I'm actually going to, let's get, I'm not going to do this actually. I'm going to, let's say, um, I'm going to build, I'm going to build a few rows of the triangle right here. Okay, so what is this What is this number here? If we write this in terms of the row number and the position number, you know what, I wanna build the fourth row. Um, you know what, Let, let's, let's do this one. I'll explain why I wanna choose this one. It's more fun, it's more exciting if we, oh my goodness. So I'm trying to show you how to get to any row without doing the previous rows. So this is third row, second position. Okay, this term is in the third row, second position. Now, how can I tell you the value of the third row in the second position without you know building everything in the triangle? Well, this, this number has a very special meaning. Okay, third row, second position. That's basically saying if I have three items and I want to choose two of them, 
how many ways do I have to do it? Okay, if you have three items and I want to choose only two. So, you know what? My uh, kids are really thinking, like they love candy right now. So I'm going to do Starburst, uh, Kit Kat, and uh, Coffee Crisp. Okay, so I have three candies here. I have three items. How many different ways can I just choose two of them? So you can do Starburst Kit Kat, you can do Starburst Coffee Crisp, or you could do Kit Kat Coffee Crisp. And that's it. Okay, there's no there's no other way of choosing two from the three I have here. So one more time. Starburst Coffee Crisp. Starburst Kick uh, Coffee Crisp. Oh my gosh. Starburst Kit Kat. And then lastly, Kit Kat Coffee Crisp. There's no other so there's three ways to do that. And guess what? What's the number here? Three. Let's do one more. I have uh, the fourth row and what position? Zero, one, two, three. So four, row four, position three. So this time, how many different ways can I uh, choose three items? Choose three of the four. If I have four items, and how do I? And I, I choose three of them. So this time I'm going to have four candies, and I'm only going to choose three. And how many ways can I do that? This time I'm not going to be fancy. I'm going to do uh, X, W, X, Y, Z. So I'll give you a minute. You can pause the video. Uh, I only want to choose three. So you could do W, X, Y. You could do X, Y, Z. You could do uh, Y, Z, W. And you could do, you know, I lost track. <laughs> uh, you know, let's just, let's just write it down. W, X, Y, uh, W, Y, Z. Uh, we could do X, Y, Z. And there's one I'm missing here. One second. And lastly, W, X, Z. So W, X, Y, W, Y, Z, W, X, Z, X, Y, Z. So guess what? If you have four items and you're only choosing three, how many ways can you do it? Four different ways. Okay, and the calculator can actually do it very quickly. So we have uh, four, four, choose three. Four items, you're only choosing three, and there's four. So if someone asked me, hey, what are the, what are the uh, terms in row 15 of Pascal's triangle? I can build it. So 15 choose zero, the first term is obviously one. 15 choose one, it's 15. 15 choose two, and you can build the, the terms of the 15th row very, very quickly. Um, yeah, so that's my little pro tip for Pascal's Triangle.